أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان ومن يتبع خطوات الشيطان فإنه يأمر بالفحشاء والمنكر ولولا فضل الله عليكم ورحمته ما زكى منكم من أحد أبدا ولكن الله يزكي من يشاء والله سميع عليم ولا يأت لأولو الفضل منكم والسعة أن يؤتوا أولي القربى والمساكين والمهاجرين في سبيل الله وليعفوا وليصفحوا ألا تحبون أن يغفر الله لكم والله غفور رحيم إن الذين يرمون المحصنات الغافلات المؤمنات لعنوا في الدنيا والآخرة ولهم عذاب عظيم يوم تشهد عليهم ألسنتهم وأيديهم وأرجلهم بما كانوا يعملون يومئذ يوفيهم الله دينهم الحق ويعلمون أن الله هو الحق المبين الخبيثات للخبيثين والخبيثون للخبيثات والطيبات للطيبين والطيبون للطيبات أولئك مبرؤون مما يقولون لهم مغفرة ورزق كريم صدق الله العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إنا نسألك من الخير كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل ونسألك مما سألك به محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك مما تعوذ به محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وما قضيت لنا من قضاء فاجعل عاقبته لنا رشدا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Once again Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to everyone in the house. We are welcome back to the final session of the Simply RYQ Ramadan edition brought to you by tvq.academy, your bodily school of the Quran. Subhanallah, before anything, I will again want to uh, apologize for not being able to record last week. But qadar Allah ma sha'a fa'al, maybe there is uh, a divine wisdom in that. So that was beyond human control. I was recording here. I forgot to record here. I rec- in fact, I do have the audio anyway. And for that matter, if anyone wants the audio, I can pass the audio to you just to catch up with whatever we have shared 
last week. This being our final session of the Simply RYQ, uh, we hope that whatever we are going to share today builds on whatever we have learned uh, we have learned last week right whatever we are going to 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 share today inshallah will build on whatever we have learned last week last two weeks last three weeks session 1 session 2 session 3 which complete the framework of the simply ryq uh, simply ryq tartil simple ryq tahfiz simply ryq Muraja'a and simply RYQ uh, Tadabur. Some of may ask, what is Tartil? Tartil is basically to recite, to read the Quran. And I believe that in order for anyone to claim understanding the Quran, he must have read it. So it has to start with Iqra, Bismi Rabbika Ladi Khalaq. Iqra, Rabbuka Akram. And there, move on, moving on to Tahfidh. Some of me ask, what is Tahfidh? Tahfidh is to memorize the Quran or some parts of the Quran. And uh, it is through memorization that the knowledge will uh, stick to the memory. And no knowledge does not require some level of memorization. So, so, so when someone comes to tell you, understand and apply. What do you understand to apply if you, you, you cannot recall anything at all from memory? So memory, memorization is definitely important. <laughs> all right. Uh, and then muraja. Muraja. Someone may ask, what is muraja? Muraja means to keep up. I want to use the word to keep up with the Quran. Uh, to revise what one, one has memorized, to revise what one knows or has learned in the Quran. That is basically muraja. And then tadabur comes uh, internalization, understanding, appreciation, and the terminology moves on. Today's, the final session has three main objectives to achieve. And the first goes as to clear some misconceptions regarding to understanding the Quran. So we hope at the end of this session to clear some misconceptions pertaining to understanding the Quran. This mis the, the clearance of these mis mis misconceptions may be direct. It may be subtle. Uh, our level of attention could help us to achieve them accordingly, inshallah. The second objective is to develop a better appreciation for understanding the Quran. All right, and the final objective of this session number four, final session, is to come out with a plan or two that help to understand the Quran. Okay, to come out with a plan. It's not like we are going to collectively de design a plan. No, it is to inspire you to think of ways that you will start to implement to achieve some level of understanding of the Quran as you read it, as you memorize it, as you keep up with it. And that is the whole of the whole uh, objective of the Tadabur wing. Simply RYQ. Iqra wa Rabbukal Akram. Moving on, our agenda for today's session will be only three and only. Only three and only. Three and only. Only three. Right. The first will be introduction. Something that is related to the entire topic appreciation and uh, understanding and appreciation of the of the quran so the first agenda will be uh, uh what do they call it outline will be introduction understanding versus appreciation and how to understand the quran all right so i hope so far so good we are on the same on the same page. All right, here we go. When we talk about uh, introduction, um, I would like to throw this question as usual to the house. And I will really, really appreciate <laughs> that uh, we uh, we interact. Okay, uh, imagine me. Huh? I mean, I want you to pardon me today. Today I am the, 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 the receive, I'm at the receiving end in the, in the entire house. Uh, and you have to pardon my my ignorance. I mean, do we need to understand the Quran? Your six-year-old child, your four-year-old child asks you, 
uh, mommy, daddy, why do we need to understand the Quran? Do we need to understand the Quran? The Quran sounds so nice, so I just want to enjoy it as music. What is the need for us to understand the Quran? And you say, oh yes, you need to understand the Quran, and you just move on uh, walking. Do you think he will be satisfied? Why do we need to understand the Quran? So do we need to understand the Quran? Uh, when we understand the Quran, perhaps these are some reasons why we should understand the Quran or we need to understand the Quran or we must understand the Quran. To some people, they should understand the Quran. To some people, they must understand the Quran. Uh, but at some, uh, uh, at, uh, uh, everyone must have some level of understanding of the Quran at some point in his or her life. Okay, we. I hope we are going to cover all this in the next less than two hours, inshallah ta'ala. So when we understand the Quran, we appreciate it better. Uh, when we understand the Quran, we are able to put it into practice. And uh, uh, when we understand the Quran, we are able to share it with others based on knowledge, not based on, oh, my grandmother used to say, <laughs> my grandfather used to say, uh, uh and the, the 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 eminent person in my in my neighborhood used to say uh, we can respect whoever we want to respect we can cherish anyone we can we can embrace anyone but what he says does not become the parameter or the uh the boundary unless it is in line with the quran with what the quran says therefore when someone understands the quran his word becomes, as we, we, we agreed upon in previous uh, sessions, becomes his word becomes honorable. His word becomes valuable. His word becomes, because he is actually conveying what the Quran is saying. Therefore, when we understand the Quran, we are able to share it with, with others based on knowledge. All right? And when we understand the Quran, we earn even more bountiful of rewards. Yeah. We earn, we earn many folds of rewards. Besides the reward of reading, besides the reward of memorizing, besides the reward of keeping up with the Quran, when we understand the Quran, we are entitled for more rewards. Okay, Understanding the Quran requires a different set of efforts. Okay, Understanding the Quran requires a different set of efforts. Just like, subhanAllah, this session... Had understanding the Quran not been important, this session would have not, not been important also. We could have just be, be sufficed with session number one, session number two, and session number three, and we were good to go. But because understanding is a set on its own, it's a corner on its own in the building, we have to give it attention to make sure that it is clean, to ensure that it is uh, it is take, well taken care of, and then, we, and then we move on. Therefore, understanding the Quran is... As necessary as reading, as memorizing, as uh, as appreciating or embracing. All right. Uh, therefore, it also requires a set of efforts on its own. It doesn't come automatically. So when someone memorizes the Quran but does not put in extra effort or a different set of effort to understand it, he will only be someone who has memorized it without understanding it. When someone may also understand the Quran without being able to memorize it because he has put in the effort the skill set that and that enables him to to understand it rather than putting in or or going through the skill set that will enable him to memorize it this skill set skill set of memorizing skill set of understanding one may be able to combine them together in the journey of learning the the Quran okay so we talk about the rewards. In a hadith reported by Imam Muslim from the narration of Sayyidina Uqba ibn, ibn Amir radiallahu anhu, Uqba ibn Amir relates that قال خرج رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ونحن في الصفة A صفة is a corner in the, at the back of the mosque of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم during the time of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم where some companions who were who had the interest of uh, of documenting whatever they hear from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the likes of Uqba, uh, the likes of Sayyidina Abu Huraira. So these Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. So these they will most of the time be at the at the sofa 
in the mosque of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he says, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came uh, uh, came out from his from his home because the houses of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to be attached to their mosque, right? Uh, so he said to them while they were in the sofa. أيكم يحب أن يغدو كل يوم إلى بطحانة أو إلى العقيق فيأتي منه بناقتين كوماوين في غير إثم ولا ولا قطع رحم. Who among you wishes to go out of this place or out of his place of residence to a place in Medina called بطحان or another place called العقيق? Who among you wishes to go out every day in the morning to بطحان or to العقيق and come out? With and come back with she two she camels, two she camels of his own, without having uh, stolen it or without having caused harm to anyone or without having uh, have to clash with his uh, uh, his uh, kinship. All right, min gairi min gairi ithmin without committing any sin in the process of earning those two she camels, female camels. Or without having to have to severe his kinship with his family members in the process of attaining those two she camels. This the prophet asked the companions this question. The companions who were in a sofa. "Qulna ya Rasool Allah, nuhibu thalik." In another version, "Kulluna yuhibu thalik." Uqba ibn Amir says, "We said when the prophet asked this, we said, Ya Rasool Allah, yes, of course, we all want this. We all want to every day to go out." To uh, Bhutan or to Al Aqiq and come back with two she camels. Of course, two she camels are. We, it's talking about money. It's talking about treasure. It's talk, it talking about. It, it, it talks. It, it's talking about wealth. All right. Faqala uh, Rasulullah uh, and then the Prophet Allah says, Imagine if every day you are going to come to go out and come back with something as valuable as two female camels, then. أفلا يغدو أحدكم إلى المسجد؟ why why not one of you go to the mosque؟ فيعلم and learn أو يقرأ آيتين or read two verses من كتاب الله from the book of Allah سبحانه وتعالى instead of going to بطحان or going to العقيق and earning from halal two she camels every day why not one of you go to the mosque؟ and learn two verses or read two verses from the Quran is better that for him than two she camels. And if he is to go to the mosque and learn two verses or learn to uh, uh, read two, two, the three verses, okay? Uh, if he is to go to the mosque to learn three verses or three or read three, uh, three verses, it's better for him than three she camels. And if he is to, 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 to learn four verses or read four verses, it's better for him than he earning four she camels from Bhutan or from Al Aqiq. Alright? And the more of it he learned from the book of Allah, or the more of it he read from the book of Allah, the more the better it is for what he will gain from the she camels in numbers. These are how the, your rewards for learning to understand the Quran build up and accumulate for you along, along the way. All right? So we hope that this motivates us to take our the, the, the component of understanding the Quran uh, serious, as serious as the component of learning to read, the component of learning to memorize, the component of learning to 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 keep up with the Quran because they come together hand in hand. Moving on, why don't we understand the Quran when reading it? Now, when we talk about it, it is important for us to understand the Quran. To some, we must understand the Quran. To some, we should understand the Quran. All of us, there must be something we have to understand in the Quran. Now another question comes in. If this is the case, why don't we understand the Quran when reading it? So when you say to me, assuming I am your four-year-old child, oh, we don't understand the Quran because we, we don't understand Arabic language. And he, your four-year-old child, asks you, that means everyone who understands Arabic understands the Quran? Can you comfortably say yes to him? 
Everyone who understands Arabic understands the Quran. Can you say yes? I mean, if you go to the Middle East, if you go to Cairo, if you go to Medina, if you go to Mecca, if you go to Damascus, if you go to Beirut, I mean, uh, anyone who, a native Arab, a native Arab today, 2021, who you meet and he, he can speak Arabic, do you, can, you, can you comfortably tell me, your four-year-old child, that this fellow understands the Quran? So we don't understand Arabic, uh, we, we don't understand the Quran because we do not understand the Arabic language. That means automatically whoever understands Arabic language understands the Quran. Is that the case? To some extent, yes. To some extent, no. All right. Uh, so why don't we understand the Arabic, uh, the, the Quran? We do not understand the Quran perhaps because of language barrier. Okay. So that answer, language barrier. Okay, so someone is rebutting my, my idea, my idea, my opinion. He says, even Abu Lahab failed to understand it. Okay, here we don't say Abu Lahab failed to understand it, uh, Brother Zubair. Uh, Abu Lahab definitely understood the Quran. <laughs> Abu Lahab, Abu Lahab was, was a learned person, by the way. Abu Lahab was a learned person. And the Quran was revealed in the language that Abu Lahab masters the best. <laughs> so Abu Lahab, he understood the Quran, okay? Uh, did he accept it or not? That's a different story altogether. But understanding-wise, he understood the Quran. All right, Abu Lahab, Abu Jahl, and all those uh, guys. So in our, uh, in our age today, in our era, we can say, oh, we don't understand the Quran because of language barrier, which to some extent is definitely true. We do not understand the Quran because of language barrier. However, we also should know that not everyone who understands not everyone who understands uh, the uh, who understands the arabic language understands the quran yes language barrier could be the cause why or the reason why uh, we do not understand the quran okay <sighs> We don't understand the, the Quran perhaps because we are not exposed enough to its meaning. Because for all you know, there are some who understand the meaning of the Quran without knowing Arabic language. We will come to this in a while. We do not understand the Quran perhaps because, some, because of some many other factors. Because of some many other factors. All right. So... We, with that, we have done with the introduction. Let's move on. Understanding versus appreciation. So when we say, understand the Quran, understand the Quran. And previously, before this slide, I have made use of the word appreciate, appre appreciation, appreciate. I have made use of the word a few times, but I have made use of understanding uh, many full times than appreciation. So what is the difference between understanding and appreciation? Or oh, when we say to someone, oh, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your effort. It's like I'm saying thank you to you. But we say thank you to the Quran. So, understanding versus appreciation. We understand something when we are able to intellectualize it. When we are able to communicate it. When we are able to articulate it. To, to, to make form, to, to manipulate it. That is how we understand something. But when we appreciate something, it means we cherish it. It means we treasure it. We value it. And we embrace it. We are so fond of it. We appreciate it. Still not clear. We understand something. We are able to articulate it. So when we appreciate something, we are... Uh, we cherish it and treasure it and we are we become fond of it still not clear okay appreciation comes after understanding and not vice versa when you see someone he is fond of something that means he understands its value he understands uh he 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 knows the the, the value of the thing he knows what it takes to 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 get it 
what it takes to to make it if it is it's something that can be made and what not okay appreciation comes af- after understanding oh are you telling me that if i do not understand the quran it means that i don't appreciate it okay appreciation while understanding leads to appreciation there are some other ways also one can appreciate the quran although he does not understand it someone who has memorized the quran but he does not understand it don't you think that he will appreciate the quran he definitely appreciates the quran because the sweetness we talk about sweetness right the sweetness he leaves from memorizing the quran cannot be described and therefore he appreciates it all right and for someone who also understands it he appreciates it but from a different a different angle so understanding definitely leads to appreciation however not everyone who understands the quran does appreciate it talking about abu lahab right abu lahab understood the quran but did he appreciate it no he did not appreciate it that's why he did not accept islam and same applies to abu abu jahal abu jahal and umayya ibn khalaf and those who rejected the quran then and today all right i hope this is clear inshallah appreciation comes after understanding and not vice versa come on. let's now let's take a look at this this is verse number 22 out of the few verses i read at the beginning of the program let me repeat it wala ya'tali ulul fadli minkum wala ya'tali ulul fadli minkum wasa'ah an yu'tu ulil qurba wal masakin wal muhajirin fi sabilillah وَلْيَعْفُوا وَلْيَصْفَحُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Who can tell me what he understood from this verse? And again, imagine me as your four-year-old child <laughs> asking, Wow, this sounds very nice. So since we agree that understanding is important and we should understand or we must understand what does this mean you don't have to open your your Quran or your translations just tell me what you and un- it's okay if you don't understand just say oh i don't understand but definitely you appreciate it and you know it is Quran there's nothing wrong with that if you understand whoever understand share with me what you understand from the verse based on what you see on the screen only not based on tafsir you have read and then whatever inputs you can remember just what you based on the screen what do you understand from this verse so this is the quran wala ya'tali ulul fadli minkum was-sa'ati an yu'tu ulil qurba wal masakin wal muhajirin fi sabilillah wal ya'fu wal yasfahu ala tuhibbuna yaghfir allah lakum wallahu ghafurur rahim now let me ask the question differently how many people understand the verse If you understand the verse please give me or show me your virtual thumbs uh thumbs up show me your virtual virtual thumbs up show me your virtual thumb If you understand this verse based on the screen only please show me your virtual thumb next part of the verse the same verse let's look at it now let not those who are possessed of means and plenty among you resolve to withhold their bounty from their kindred and their and the needy and those who have uh, migrated from their homes in the cause of Allah let them forgive and overlook do you not wish Allah to forgive you Allah is forgiving and merciful let me paraphrase it those of you who are rich and those of you who have surplus of wealth let them not swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not give to uh to their to their kinship who are who so happen to be to be poor and who also so happen to be from the muhajirin they have migrated for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for because they have wronged you or they have they have offended you just because they offended you do not decide to stop giving him if you have been giving him all right whatever wrong he has done you forgive and forget 
Don't you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also to forgive you and forget for your for your for your for your wrongdoings? Allah is Ghafur Rahim. Now back. I'm not asking where did the verse come from. I'm just asking what do you understand from the verse based on the screen. So do not go into other 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 topics. Uh, and I say do not ask, uh, do not refer to any 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 references at this point of time. So uh now, based on what you see on the screen now, who has 60 to 70% of understanding of this verse now? Show me your thumbs up. You have heard the Arabic verse of it. You have heard the English verse of it. Who has 70%, 60%, even 50% of understanding of the verse now? Show me your virtual, virtual thumb. Now we have taken a look at the verse purely from Arabic. And maybe 2%, I mean, 20% of us understood it just based on the Arabic because it is Arabic, because he understands Arabic. But when we show the translation, uh, we have some who have gone up to 50% of understanding because it has been explained in, in English. What does this mean? Okay. Someone may be reading the, the Quran every day and knows Arabic, but he has never understood the there, there, he has never, never understood the, the meaning of the, of the verse. Someone may be reading and the moment he heard the English translation of it, he understood it. And because the one who learned it from the English part, he wants to internalize it and appreciate it, he will appreciate it more than the one who, although he understands it from Arabic, but he has not been appreciating it. So one may appreciate the Quran, uh, based on the understanding the meaning from a translation, not necessarily from the from the Quran, from the from the Arabic. All right. So if we move on, how do we understand the Quran then? I mean, I do not understand the Arabic Arabic language. How do I understand the Quran? How to understand the Quran? Why may I ask? One may ask. Okay. So someone may say, if that is the case, I can just read the translation and understand the Quran. If you read a translation, you will only understand 50% or less than 50% of the meaning of the verse. Because you will understand based on what you see on the screen and based on what the translator has understood and decided to share with you in his translation. Commentator, translator. However, had you understood the Arabic language, you might have understood it differently. Of course, differently in a better way or maybe at the same level of the person's understanding. Okay. So this section of how to understand the Quran, we divide it into a few, uh, a few uh, components. The first is understanding the structure of the Quran. The second is Understanding the level of understanding the Quran, knowing the levels of understanding of understanding the, the Quran. All right. And then the third thing is something practical. We talk about something practical, which we hope will help us to understand the Quran in a better way, even though we do not understand the Arabic language. All right. Let's look at the verse again. This is the same verse we have just shared. This is the same verse we have just shared. Someone who understands the Arabic language, myself, uh, it is not always that I will take a verse and understand every single vocabulary in it right away. And sometimes I may have understanding of the vocabulary, but it is the, a com contemporary understanding of the vocabulary and not the real meaning or understanding which was given to that that vocabulary during the time of the revelation of the verse. So sometimes I have to go back to, uh, to, to find meanings for some of the verses of some of the words in a verse. And this verse is one of such. So when I decided to read this set of verses and coincidentally, I was inspired to use this verse as an example. I asked myself, what is the meaning of Wala Yateli? 
Just now when I showed the the English translation, which is from Wahiruddin Khan, what did he say? Do, uh, let not those of you who have wealth and 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 plenty do not resolve to. Whereby wala yatali al alayya in Arabic means to swear. I swear by Allah, I'm not going to do. But in the translation, he did not use the word swear. He said, let them not resolve to. So he put it in a very flexible, in a very uh, lenient way. So if we talk about translate, that's why we talk. The translation, if we, we, yes, we can understand the Quran based on translation, but it will be based on what the commentator or the translator wants us to understand. That is what he understood, yes, but that is what he also wants us to understand. However, if we go to the to the source of the verse, well, I tell you, what does it mean? Let them not swear. So the, the, the mean of do not resolve to, and the mean of do not swear, they were uh, east and west. <laughs> Although the translator, that's what he wants to say, but he wants to sound diplomatic, politically correct, maybe. All right. So here, language is important. Let those whom Allah has bestowed wealth and bounty upon, the rich people among you, let them not swear, all right, not to give any more to their to their to their relatives who are masakin who are poor and those who are who have also migrated in the, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let them forgive and forget he said let them forgive and overlook here i'm using let them forgive and forget i choose to use that word he chose to use that word ala tuhibbuna yaghfir allah lakum don't you love that allah will forgive you what did he say don't you wish that allah will forgive you or pardon you. Allahu ghafoorur rahim. Allah is merciful. So language, understanding the language of the verse is very important. In other words, understanding the language of the Quran is very important to understanding, to understand the, the Quran. Now, if someone has Islamic background, Arabic background, they will look at the verse and say, okay, some, some words look very familiar. For example, Ulil Qurba, for example, Masakin, plural form of Miskin, for example, Muhajirin, plural form of Muhajir, for example, Fisabilillah, every Muslim knows the meaning of Fisabilillah. And then, Allah uh, tuhibbuna an yaghfir Allah lakum Allah, everyone knows the meaning of Allah. Wallahu ghafur rahim is a very high frequency phrase or, 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 or statement or a, a paragraph in the paragraph, sentence in the Quran. Right? Language is very important. When we say language, the Arabic language, there are several and various sciences of the Arabic language. It's not just the language. It's not just the literature. So many sciences in Arabic. You talk about Nahu, you talk about Balagha, you talk about Saruf, you talk about, uh, uh, you talk about uh, Badi'a, you talk about a few sciences in Arabic that all fall under the umbrella of language. So now when I explain, your understanding of the verse has escalated. Now, look at this. The same, the same phrase again, in a different qira'a, in a different qira'a, it is read, وَلَا يَتَأَلَّ أُولُ الْفَضْلِ مِنْكُمْ يَتَأَلَّ يَتَأَلَّ means to, to, to boldly say. He don't say to swear, but to boldly say. All right? Here, uh, in, in that qira'a, a qira'a or qira'at is a different science. One of the science of the Qur'an. One of the, so we talk about language. It's a, the, a few sciences of language which one must possess. To understand the Quran, understand the Quran to the highest level. A few sciences of Quran one must know. Just this, this one thing I mentioned about the Qira'a is one of the sciences needed. There are a few sciences. For example, Nasikh al Mansukh. This verse, is it still valid? 
or it has been over, overridden by another verse, one must know that. Okay, sababun nuzul. When was the Quran? When was this verse uh, revealed? Why was it revealed? In what occasion did it reveal? Was it revealed? I believe all of us know that uh, uh, Sayyidatna Aisha radiallahu anha uh, experienced once in her life during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam of being accused of uh, adultery, falsely accused of uh, of adultery, and the Quran came down to clear her. The entire surah An Nur was revealed because of that incident. And verse number 22 is one of the verses in Surah An-Nur. Okay, what does this verse have to do with Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha? Sayyidina Aisha was the daughter of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Sayyidina Aisha, his own daughter was helpless in a situation where no one could control, no one could say anything about it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa could not do anything about it because there was no revelation to clear Sayyidina Aisha. And who... Is that who will have an, an easy time knowing that his wife has committed adultery, for example? All right. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq was also in the middle of the entire, entire, entire thing. Sayyidina Abu Bakr was a wealthy person. A wealthy person. In Medina, he after migration, he used to, to spend on many of the poor people in Medina, including one fellow Sahabi. Radiallahu anhu by the name Mistah. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr used to, to spend on him. Mistah was Muhajir from Medina, from Makkah, Muhajir to Medina. He was also a poor person. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq used to, used to spend on him. When the, 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 the saga of Sayyidina Aisha popped up, Mistah was among some of the companions who spread the rumors in Medina. And mind you, Mistah is a cousin to Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. Oh, yes, Mistah was a cousin to Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. And he was among those who was afflicted. He was who was uh, affected by fitna to spread the rumors in Medina. So when Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq knew about it, imagine someone you spend on does this to you, to your dignity. What will you do? Now the verse is starting to make more sense. So after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Surah An-Nur, Surah An-Nur, to clear Sayyidatna Aisha radiallahu anha, and Abu Bakr came to his comfort, and then, then he said, my daughter is clean, my daughter is clear. Why did you all do this to me? I swear, I will never spend on mistah anymore. And then another verse came, to, came in. Those of you who have plenty, who have wealth, should not, should not swear not to, not to spend on their kinship. Look at this. Uli al-Qurba, to their kinship. Mistah was a cousin to Abu Bakr Siddiq. Wal Masakin, he was a cousin to Abu Bakr Siddiq and he was also a poor person at the same time. A cousin who happens to be a poor. Well, Muhajirin, he migrated from Mecca to Medina. A cousin, a poor, a Muhajir. Fi sabilillah. Why did Abu Bakr say this? Because it is, it, is, it is very painful. It is hurtful. Yet Allah says, Wal yafu, Let them forgive. Wal yasfahu, and forget about it. It is still difficult to forgive and forget. My dignity, you know, my daughter, my innocent daughter was, 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 her image was tarnished. And then Allah says, Allah to Hibuna and Yaghfir Allah. Don't you want Allah to forgive you? Or right, this fellow has offended you. Let's agree on that. But don't you also have your own wrongdoings in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Don't you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you? Allah to Hibuna and Yaghfir Allah. Wallahu Ghafur Rahim. Now look at how the verse makes sense. Mistah, a cousin, a faqir, a miskin, a muhajir. And then Sayyidah Aisha. And then after, after, after Hijrah. And then Medina. And then accusation of adultery. Background. When you have the background of the verse, 
your understanding of the verse becomes deeper and deeper. And then, Aqeedah. Now we are talking about أن يؤتوا أولي القربى والمساكين والمهاجرين في سبيل الله given given for the sake of Allah سبحانه وتعالى forgiving for the sake of Allah سبحانه وتعالى when someone tells you oh I have forgiven you I have forgot forgotten and he does not do it for the sake of Allah سبحانه وتعالى what does he get in return dunya wise he, definitely he will get he will he will be happy for forgiveness and what not because he his heart will be will be empty of that that enmity and hatred towards the person but in as far as islam is concerned aqida is involved when you forgive forgive for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you overlook or you forget forget about it for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aqida okay fiqh and when you talk about aqida we talk about usul <laughs> din the fundamentals of the deen. And then, uh, 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 fiqh, usul al-fiqh. What is the fiqh ruling pertaining to giving? Here, Mistah is a cousin to Abu Bakr Siddiq, a relative. A relative who is a poor. Should we prioritize him or should we prioritize a poor person who may not be a, a, who may not be a relative? Okay, a poor person who is a neighbor, but not is not a relative. Who do we prioritize? Fiqh comes in. And usul al-fiqh comes in. And hadith. The, uh, uh, what did the Prophet say about, 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 the, uh, about the, the verse? What, what is it that uh, those who narrated the incidents of the, of the, of the, of the hadith, of the, of the hadith, of the verse, are they people to be trusted? Are they people to be, to be, for the hadith to be accepted? Or they are just any Tom, Dick and Harry hadith? And Musala hadith as well. And then seerah. We talk about the uh, the incident. What happened? Okay, the Prophet وسلم, went to to Ghazwa. I think Ghazwa the Tabuk on the way back, and then the incident happened. Sira, Sira of Mista. Mista was Muhajir. Sayyidina, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiAllahu anhu, the father of Sayyidina Aisha. If we learn Sira, we learn we learn all this in the in the package, and then other sciences as well. So all this make the verse. This particular verse. We, it gives us a very bigger image of the of the verse, and if we are able to to en- to to encompass all this pertaining to the entire verses or the verses of the entire Quran, then our understanding of the Quran will be much much better. All right. So, talking about how to understand the Quran. The structure of the Quran. And before we talk about the structure of the Quran, I want to ask again the same question I asked earlier on. The verse which we just dissected, right? Who understands it? If you understand the verse now, up to 80%, 90%, show me your your right, your virtual thumb. All right. So the structure of the Quran, we need to understand the structure of the Quran and it will help us to understand the Quran even when we do not understand the Arabic language. All right? Here we go. We have something like this. The Quran is a book, yes. But it is not like any other book. It is not like any other book that we we refer to as a book. Okay, this statement, someone will say, yes, it is a book. Of course, it's not like any other book because it's a book of Allah, because it is a divine book. That's not what I mean. What I mean is, during the time of the, the revelation of the Quran, yes, we know that the Quran was revealed, uh, was first revealed in Laylatul Qadr to Allah al-Mahfuz, right? However, the Quran was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam starting from 17 Ramadan, all right, uh, ten years before, uh, uh, thirteen years before Hijra. What all the way throughout a period of twenty three years, and it was revealed in a way uh, according to events, according to occasions, according to happenings and incidents. Therefore, some surahs were revealed together. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدٌ لَمْ يَلِدُ وَلَمْ يُولَدُ وَلَمْ يَكُلَّهُ كُفْوَ نَحَدٌ It was revealed together. 
قل اعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق اذا اقوى من شر نفع ذلك في نقول من شر حاسد اذا حسد اتوس ريفيل تو جذا قل اعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس اله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنه والناس اتوس ريفيل تو جذا However on the other hand there are some verses some surahs in the Quran that were not revealed together some verses were revealed separately some set of verses were revealed separately some look imagine surah al-baqarah surah al-baqarah 49 pages 48 pages the last verse of it was revealed what after uh, uh the, the after after almost before the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed on and it says what al yawma akmal wa taqu yawman turja'una fihi ila allah and that is considered as the last verse to, to be revealed in the entire quran wa taqu yawman turja'una fihi ila allah thumma tuwaffa kullu nafsin ma kasabat wa hum la yuzlamun before that before that verse in the quran the verses that were before that talk about riba The verses that come after that talk about transaction, business transaction. And then in between this verse comes in. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ ثُمَّ تُوَفَّى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتُهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ If you are to explain or read the translation or to understand, of course the verse fits just nicely in that position. However, it doesn't mean that it was all together revealed together. No. They were revealed separately. And many, many and many. The Quran is a book but it is not arranged like our books. Therefore, we should not ex- uh, 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 use the uh, expect to understand every surah together like oh the surah is together so everything must make sense in the same sequence of the surah. If you do that, you will end up asking question the Quran doesn't make sense lah. I don't believe like it doesn't it, it is not from from God and what not. because this background is missing all right because this background is missing it was tied to events and occasions yes the quran was tied to events and occasion the verse of the quran were descended uh, separately some sets some single verses some short surahs some surahs uh, combined and 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 what not all right and then the verses of surah don't necessarily have to complete one another uh, when we say a verse a verse is not is not uh it's not equal to a paragraph meaning a paragraph or a sentence a verse doesn't have to be a complete sentence it can be a phrase that's all it can be a phrase that's all was so far to suffer for example allah says allah swear by by was so far to suffer what does it mean it's not a complete sentence yes and there are a few of them such thing uh liyawmin azim for the great day liyawmin azim for the great day if you say to someone liyawmin azim sadaq allah alazim when well, you have not said anything yes it is quran but it doesn't it doesn't complete any 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 sense. however it is quran no one can say it is not quran saying this is not quran will take someone out of islam already this is how the quran is so and there are many other things that uh, pertain to the structure of the quran that we will want to understand and it will enable enhance our understanding of the of the quran to a better to a better level and it was written in it was revealed in arabic <laughs> yes it was revealed in arabic we all know this okay If that is the case do we need to understand the arabic language to understand the quran since the quran was revealed in arabic must we understand arabic language to understand the quran i repeat i use the same the same word do we need uh, do we need to understand the arabic language to, to understand to understand the quran the answer can be yes and the answer may be a real subjective but the ideal way of understanding the quran is to understand the arabic and when we say arabic it is not the the commercial arabic the commercial arabic can help us to understand the the classical arabic fine but it is not enough for us to understand the 
it is a, a, a process that we have to go through to help us to understand understand it. So ideally, we need to understand, we must understand Arabic in order to and appreciate the Quran more, understand the Quran in a better in a better way. Like I gave the examples earlier on, a different translator, commentator will comment on a based on his sense of humor or sense of understanding of the of 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 what is there in the Quran. It may, it may not, and different languages will have to use will differ in choice of words to express and communicate the meaning of the Quran. Even in English, I mean, different versions of translation in English differ, isn't it? So, when we say understanding the Quran, let's take a, a note at this. Uh, take a note, take a look at this. A native Arabic speaker will understand to a greater extent the Quran, but not in depth, not necessarily in depth. Okay, someone who speaks Arabic, who understands Arabic, fusha, classical Arabic, not the uh, 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 colloquial they say. Someone who understands fusha will understand the Quran uh, naturally to a very big extent. It's not necessary that he will understand every single thing in the Quran. Even mufassirun, even scholars, do not know everything in the Quran. Alif, Lam, Mim. No one will be able to tell you what it means. Why? Because it is a revelation that the, that revelation did not tell us what it means. So there is no way we can know what it means. So knowing everything in the Quran, not even the specialists, the experts, the scholars know everything in the in the Quran. However, whatever is there that has been made accessible and public in the uh, uh, within the framework of Quran, scholars know it. All right. So a native Arabic speaker will understand to a great extent. Will understand it to a great extent, but not 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 necessarily in depth. This is where it comes. Abu ja Abu Jahal, Abu Lahab. During the during their time, there were no classes for 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 explaining the meaning of the Quran. So the Quran will be revealed, the Prophet will read it, and whoever will hear it will understand 85%, 90% of it. This is how the Quran, uh, the Quran works, the, and this is the level of understanding. Do we need Arabic to understand the Quran? Ideally, yes. But that doesn't mean that if we don't understand Arabic, we cannot understand the Quran. We can understand the Quran, but to some level of our capacity. All right? A non-native Arabic speaker who has studied Arabic or tafsir of the Quran will understand better than a native Arabic speaker who only knows Arabic but does not know tafsir. For instance, a companion who has heard the Quran from the Prophet wasallam, and the Prophet has put it into practice right in front of him will appreciate the Quran more or the verse more than someone who lived in the time of the Prophet wasallam and only heard the companions reading the Quran without elaborating what they saw the Prophet doing after reading the Quran, that, that particular verses. Clear? So a, a native Arabic speaker who has studied tafsir, just like the companion, the companion who will see the Prophet Sallallahu doing or saying or reacting to the to the verse, will understand it better than a native a native speaker who only heard the Quran but does not know what are the background story of the of the verses in the Quran. Clear, inshallah. Now, a native or non-native who has studied the tafsir will understand even deeper. Uh, than anyone who has read translation or understood it secondhand. Understanding the Quran secondhand is reading it from translation. And the worst of it is when it is a third hand translation. For instance, uh, if you read a translation of the Quran in Malay, and just make sure that the, the, the one who translates it does not, does not translate it from his understanding from an English translation. If the person is translating it from his understanding of, of the Quran directly, 
fine. It becomes equal to any English translation. But if he translates the Quran in Malay, but uh, from his understanding of reading a translation in English, he's giving you <laughs> a third hand information and not a second hand knowledge. So this is very, very critical. Okay. Because it will be, uh, if you are going to transfer that information to a third party, to a, 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 another third party, you are giving a fourth hand knowledge and it will keep on fading, 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 fading. A non-native, a non, a native or a non-native who has studied the tafsir will understand deeper than anyone who read translation or, or who understood it uh, second, second hand. Clear, inshallah. Okay, the one who reflects. Now we have a non-native who has studied the the, taf, the, the, the tafsir or the meaning of the Quran, and a native who studied the tafsir. We have a non-native who uh, a native who re who only knows Arabic, so he can understand some level. A non-native who knows Arabic and knows the Quran, he will understand better. A native or non-native who knows the Quran will definitely understand much better. The one who reflects upon the Quran among all these people, the one who reflects upon the Quran will appreciate it the most. Because someone understands it, but he does not reflect upon it. Afalayat the Barun al Quran. Don't they elaborate? Elaborate. Don't they reflect upon the Quran? Don't they reflect upon the Quran? The one who reflects upon the Quran will take heed, will definitely uh, react to the Quran. What is in the Quran could be instruction. It could be a story. It could be it could be uh, an assertion. It could be general knowledge. So the one who reflects upon it will definitely what appreciate it the most. And that is what the Quran wants us to do. Of course, it must start with reading. But it doesn't stop with reading. Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram. It doesn't stop there. The reading must have follow-up, which will, which is basically what we are talking about here in the form of, uh, of understanding it. All right? So that, therefore, we have two categories of people in front of the Quran based on what we have shared earlier on. We have two people, you and I, uh, or anyone who, who stands in front of the Quran, all of us can only be, can only be divided into two categories, a layman, a layman and a specialist. A layman and a specialist. I find myself among laymen. So, uh, uh, and definitely there are scholars of the Quran who I, I learn from and I have to learn from. So I believe all of us in this class, we fall in the first category, laymen. And we have to learn from the specialist. And our learning style will depend on what we already have before attending whatever class there is. How much Arabic do we know? Then it will determine what class we will attend. How less Arabic do we know? That also will determine what class or which level of class we will be assigned assigned to. So understanding the Quran as a layman, if you want to understand the Quran as a layman, understand to, to appreciate. If we, since we are laymen, we should understand to appreciate. We should also understand to apply, to practice. Because I appreciate, but I don't take heed. I appreciate, but I don't act upon it. Uh, it's dangerous, honestly. Okay? Sometimes, uh, okay. Sometimes we don't practice because we are not aware. Fine. That is ignorance, right? Uh, the ignorant who does not practice can be excused. But the knowledgeable who does not practice uh is endangering himself honestly. Okay? So as laymen, we learn under the Quran to understand, to appreciate, to understand to, to, to apply it for our own good, and also understand to teach to a limited extent, not to a wider extent. 
I need to understand what what I read in the Quran so that I can teach my my child, for instance. I can teach a small group of people I may come across at my workplace, or maybe coincidentally in the bus, or maybe somewhere somehow randomly. But I don't put myself as how oh, uh, a public figure who knows and 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 is an authority in the Quran. All right. So. I have to understand this therefore it will help me to 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 find my way of understanding understanding the Quran especially when I take the Quran to to read understanding the Quran as a specialist will also f- have to f- to go through the same line with some amendments what is it understand to appreciate understand to apply understand to appreciate understand to apply uh and then understand to teach to the broadest extent possible if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes you when i i use the word specialist because that's the word used today the jargon uh a scholar in the quran and then you are expected to teach to the broad broadest extent possible all right now something practical <laughs> the bookmark do you remember the bookmarks we talk about in the in our in our previous session and this is where our bookmarks will become useful for us remember just now when we talk about the verse verse number 22 of surah an-nur and i believe verse number 22 of surah an-nur will remain in our memory for a very long time surah an-nur verse number 22 All right in the bookmark we mentioned that there are four ways you can make use or there are four different types of bookmarks you need in your Quran. And bookmark number 1 we said will be for the me time reading and what the me time reading will do is to increase your ikhlas because no one will see you doing it. The me time reading will involve the Quran only and your me time reading has nothing to do with your other classes, employment or business. This is what we said previously. And the second bookmark you will need to have you will need to have is a, a bookmark for reading with your teacher if you have any and you should have a teacher to read the Quran with unless you are a specialist or a class or a group and this reading with your teacher is different from reading from your me time reading and your bookmark number 3 we said is for other sessions other classes which may not necessarily be formally like it is with your teacher or with your class or with your other session other sessions of reading could be job related if you are a teacher and who teaches quran or teaches children the quran uh you don't use the same bookmark for preparing for your for those lessons as the one you use for your me time reading or the one you use for your for your official or formal class le- uh, class classes right so other sessions could be job related teaching or online following whatever and then this is where your understanding part comes in creative reading your creative reading bookmark your your bookmark for creative reading uh, may, uh, is for reading which may may be your channel for reflection understanding and other stuff so how does this work imagine this is your quran and every day you will read two pages for your me time reading okay me time yeah me time reading this is just reading you don't understand it is good to do so but you should have at the end of your two pages another bookmark for understanding the quran so you may want to start from al baqarah so first bookmark uh, the bookmark the first page of that bookmark will start from al fatiha just read surah al fatiha or a few verses in surah al fatiha and then try to read a translation and reading translation may is is not enough all right it's not enough you need to listen to someone who has explained it in simple english or any tafsir tafsir which will add value and more sense to the translation you are reading just reading the translation is not enough just like how we explained earlier on about the verse number 22 the first time i we read the translation 
oh, we got 50% of the understanding, but we didn't get the context. We didn't get that context. But when we broke down and dissected whatever possible sciences that could relate to the verse, we made more sense of the verse. We appreciate it more and we can internalize it and we can visualize, uh, imagine the, the situation of Sayyidah Tuna Aisha. The situation of Sayyidah, although we have not read the entire story of the incident of Sayyidah Aisha, but we can imagine what she was feeling. We can imagine how her father, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, was. And then we can imagine someone like Mr. Radiallahu Anhu. All right? So, reading the translation alone is never enough because it doesn't give you the entire image unless it is a commentary where they have, uh, they have uh, references, they have notes, whatever it is, to explain better, then that's a different story altogether. So, Look for while you are doing your, your uh, you, you you in your bookmark number four, creative reading. Uh, you seek to understand the Quran. You don't have to to go through two pages of the verses because two pages, try to, trying to understand two pages of of uh, two pages of verses of the Quran will take you two hours, and that can be demoralizing in the longer run. So take verse by verse. And then you will see miracle along the way. Take, I mean, small doses and build on. Don't take big chunk of doses and then give uh, give up uh, halfway uh, two weeks after starting. So, bookmark number four: creative reading. And this is mainly for your for your reflection, understanding, and definitely something that will lead to appreciation. So I cherish bookmark uh, very much. So I hope this is practical for for you. Now we are we are here. Thank you for coming, for sharing the message, and for supporting TVQ dot Academy, your borderless school of the Quran. And next session. <laughs> When will be our next session? We just said today is our final session and we'll talk about next session. Our next session will be to simply R-Y-Q. Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram. Let us not simply R-Y-Q only when there is a session like this conducted by tvq.academy. We must simply R-Y-Q at all times. And remember in Surah 2, Al-Alaqa, I think verse number five, right? Iqra bi sunubika alladhi khalaq khalaq al-insani ma'alaq khalaq al-insani ma'alaq iqra wa rabbuka al-akram alladhi ala Verse number three Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram Read and your Lord is most generous So when we read the Quran the Arabic our Lord is most generous When we read the meaning which is translation because we do not have the Arabic then that's also another form of reading, which also can take a lot of time. That's why we have to, to focus on verses, shorter verses, I mean, shorter number of verses, and then build on. And then putting it into practice, sharing it with our household, simply RYQ. Read, memorize, revise, and reflect. That is basically simply RYQ. So what is our next session? Our next session is, is continuous from here. With a class or without a class, we should simply RYQ. And I would like to appeal to, to you if you are in the class, simply RYQ is part of tvq.academy. If you are on social media, uh, share the message of tviq anytime, TV, uh, TV, IYQ, tvq.academy anytime you come across it on social media. And... If you can support, uh, definitely tvq.academy will grow with your financial support, inshallah, inshallah ta'ala. So, we are in this se se section, session, section of Q&A. Yes, any questions? Uh, creative, the, the term creative reading is basically to, to, to add, a spice to the entire 
uh, uh, appreciation of reading uh, because it is creative reading. Your, uh, you may want to to go through different surahs. You, you may not want to go to go through a verse by verse sequence from the beginning all the way all the way to the end. Your needs of understanding may differ from a needs of understanding from another one a needs of understanding. Uh, and after after all, if you remember from session one, we said uh, the whole objective is not to to dictate on you what exactly to do, but rather to inspire you to come out with plans, with frameworks, with with with, with routines uh, out of your for for your for your own self, right? So different people have different needs, have different circumstances, have different different, and so on and so forth. That is the meaning of the uh, the creative reading. So reflection, subhanallah, you will be surprised. For example, just now with the verse we shared earlier on regarding verse number 22 of Surah 2 uh, and Nur. Uh, now that we have understood it better, uh, just spend some five minutes to reflect upon it and see socially how how it feels for, for one for one's uh, wife or husband to commit adultery. Uh, uh, what are the implications? And during the time of the companions, someone like Mr. Uh, has done this to his own. Abu Bakr is his cousin. His cousin's daughter is what? His niece. To his own niece. <laughs> to his own niece. Radiallahu anhu. We are, we are just narrating facts. Okay? We are not, we are not uh, actually uh, a bad-mouthing a companion. But this is in the Quran. So imagine yourself in this situation and... You will appreciate Sayyidah Aisha better because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cleared her from the skies. Uh, you will appreciate Sayyidah Abu Bakr better because despite this, and as a, as a matter of fact, when the verse was revealed and Sayyidah Abu Bakr read it, when Allah says, Ala an Allahu lakum. Don't you love that, uh, that Allah will forgive you? Sayyidah Abu Bakr, the narration say, Sayyidah Abu Bakr responded by saying, Bala ya Rabb. Oh yes, ya Allah. I want you to forgive me. And then he went back to give Mr. all he used to spend on him. All right? So back to the question, creative reading. What's the meaning of creative reading here? Uh, do we want to understand it our own way? No, we understand it exactly what is there. But how we make use of it, uh, how, how it will help us to grow, will di di differ from one person to another. Your field of work will... You will make use of it in your field of work, different from my field of work, different from her field of work, different from his field of work, and so on and so forth. I hope this answers the, uh, the question. Can I have on the Quran being recited and go to bed? Jazakumullah <laughs> khairan. Oh yeah. Because we mentioned in the previous session to have a dedicated Quran player, isn't it? Uh, yes, you can actually on the Quran and go to bed because the objective of 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 owning or playing it and go to bed is basically for spiritual purposes and also to engage your uh, to engage your your what they call it uh your 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 what what what's the term they, they use for uh the other mind of 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 one the second mind whatever they call it uh, although I don't believe in that, but again, to engage, to engage whatever that mind, that mind is. Okay, uh, that is two. Number three, to let your children learn passively. Uh, if imagine we play music in the house, the children will, although the, no one will sit still to listen to the music, isn't it? But then again, we pick up the music. The same thing applies to the Quran. We cannot control every, all the time that no one should talk when the Quran is being played. But everyone, someone, everyone will learn something passively when the Quran is played, although we talk sometimes. Okay? Uh, when, the Quran is, uh, when the Quran is being recited, we must listen, yes. If you are in the mosque and the Quran is played in the mosque, you must listen. If you are in a public place, the Quran is being played, you must listen. Uh, if you are at home, the Quran is being played, you must listen. But... You're going to sleep, you can keep it on playing. There's nothing wrong with that. Your children, either you want to talk to your children, let the Quran play. It's still better than playing music. <laughs> All right. I hope that answers their the question. And I will 
once again, we want to thank everyone for, for coming, for those who made it for four sessions, for those who made it for less, for those who made it for, for more. I would like to thank everyone for, for coming and making this, this happen. It couldn't have happened if I was alone. <laughs> All right. So your attendance has made it, has made it happen. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ورحمك ما ربنا صغارا ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك إنك رؤوف الرحيم اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك إنك رؤوف الرحيم سبحان رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله ربي العالمين I will see you إن شاء الله in next and in more endeavors to come and by the way tvq.academy is your very own your bodily school of the Quran until the next السلام عليكم ورحمة الله